Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the color selection tools. And the color selection tools are basically selecting like colors or using colors to find the edges of things. So in this particular example, we want to change the pink petals to match more of the brand color of bluish purple. And so what we can use for this is the magic wand tool. It's one of the oldest selection tools in Photoshop and what it does is it allows you to try to select adjacent pixels that are the same color or similar to the color that you picked. So if I zoom in on this and click once on the pink, you can see that it tries to select as many pink, pixel, pink pixels that were touching or adjacent to this. Unfortunately, it didn't pick any of the pink over here. So if I click over here, it's going to add to the selection. Now, if yours didn't add to, it's probably because you were on the new selection and you clicked, and then when you clicked again, it created a new selection. So it's giving you kind of an either or option. Now, if you switch, let's do Command D, to add to selection, you can add one, add again, click again, do some dark pink, keep clicking, and see how it can get annoying because it will not select all the colors in one go. It's great because you didn't have to select any of this and you didn't have to do that darn magnetic lasso, so it, it's good in some ways. But unfortunately, if you were to click, let's say, where's this light pink? Well, I guess it's not gonna work. But see how close the pink is to the skin color here? If you have a high tolerance in here, if I say tolerance of like 50, and I click this like pink, well, it's making a liar out of me now. Light pink, see how it starts selecting the skin tone? And if you do a really low tolerance, like 15, and Command D, and we select, it only does a tiny little area. So how do we fix this? Well, we can have it to higher tolerance level, and then we can also say negative to take away from, but I think probably 40 will work for us. And we'll click here and keep adding until we have this entire selection. So this is going to allow us to just change these pink petals to a different color. So again, there's another tool in here called the color range, which we're going to talk about in one of our last videos. And that will help us a little bit more. So this can get tedious. And sometimes what I do is instead as I switch to the lasso tool and I say, okay, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Add to selection. So we're going to add that to selection. These two little dots right here. This area right here. We're going to do all this. So as you can see, I use it a lot to clean up areas. All right, so if we zoom in, okay, so see how it's got, it's encroaching some there. So if I had more patience with the magic wand tool, I could go and say, take away that color. Then it would take some away some of this and then it would get on my nerves. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose to subtract that all from the selection, subtract that from the selection, and there we go. So now we have this selected, what we can do, oops, we wanted to add this little piece is we wanna change the color. So with the butterfly spa image selected or whatever your image is, if you wanna change the color, click on the adjustments panel, go to hue and saturation, and it doesn't look like anything happened. But what did happen was it added a hue and saturation layer with a mask. And a mask has a rhyme that says white reveals, black conceals. So anywhere that it's white, it's gonna reveal that hue and saturation adjustment. Anywhere it's black, like the outside of the flower or the yellow part of the flower, it's gonna conceal it. So as we start to change in the properties panel, the hue and saturation of that flower, you, you can see that everything else changes or all the petals change, but nothing else changes. There we go. So we can zoom out and try to get it the same color. If it, if it doesn't work, you can also do desaturated and you can change the lightness or darkness. Sometimes it's gonna look fake like that or you can colorize it. And colorize is actually just coloring the pixels. So let's change the saturation a little bit and then find a blue. Mm, that's not bad. That's not bad. Okay, so that's a way to use a magic wand tool. Now how I actually use a magic wand tool, that's just demonstrating it in this instance, but usually what I'll do is just use it to get rid of white. So here I have this little ninja, and then what I wanna do is grab that magic wand tool 
And because it has a high tolerance, um, or I can even do a lower tolerance actually on this, I want to select all of that white. So see how it selects all of that here. And then I can even add to and select this white in here. And then what I can do with this is instead of selecting that part, if I do Command J, it's going to do exactly the opposite of what I wanted to do. So I'll do undo there and I'll go to select inverse and now it's going to just select the ninja so I can do command or control J there. And now the ninja is all by himself on his own transparent layer. So that magic wand tool is amazing when you're working with a solid background. Now the only part here is see how he still has all this white that I forgot. So I can click in here with the magic wand tool. I can do the add to selection and I can just keep adding all these tiny little white areas and then I can just hit delete and delete all of those. Now command D to get out of there. So that's the best use of the magic wand tool. All right. Oops, not that. Okay. So the one that is my favorite is the quick selection tool because it does use color, but what it looks for is it looks for edges based on contrast of color. So this has a high contrast of color between this board and the white background. So what I'm going to do is I am going to use that quick selection tool and it behaves just like the others, but it also kind of looks like a brush. You can make it bigger or smaller with the right or left bracket keys on your keyboard. So I'll make it about the size of the width of this board and with the add to selection layer and make sure you're on the board layer, we'll go ahead and just run it along and notice that I didn't go to the edges. It automatically found those edges. So if we zoom in and make a smaller brush, you'll see this a little bit more. So if I just click here just once, see how it already tried to pop to the edge. So click, click, click. So instead of clicking, I'm just going to click and drag and I'm going to get all of that board in there click and drag right across and you have to be careful because see how it didn't select the F. So it's trying to find high contrast edges and anywhere the text meets the, the blonder board, it's finding those edges. So you just have to make sure to push your selections that way. So I'll make a smaller brush here and just go straight down the middle and I didn't even have to do it. It automatically found those edges. So I'll do command or control zero to zoom all the way out. And now with this selected, I can do command or control J, but when I do, it looks pretty good, but it kind of has some white areas. So I'm going to undo it. And I always like to go to select and mask and that shows me those rough areas. And that's because this picture wasn't very high resolution. And so I can start to mess with the contrast and I can sort of shift the edge out or shift the edge in. Shifting the edge in isn't too bad. Mm. Let's go ahead and do smart radius. Aha. See how the smart radius tries to create, it got rid of all those jaggedy edges. So we're going to pull that smart radius up a little bit. It looks pretty darn good. So now I can output it to a selection or I can just put it to a new layer mask and click OK. What that's going to do again is white reveals black conceals. So the white is revealing the board. The black is revealing the white background. So now I can take this sign and I can command or control T, make it big, rotate it, move it in the center, hit enter, return. And I think it needs a little bit of a drop shadow. So in order for you to see this, we'll go ahead and, wow, it's not doing it right now. Okay, so I'll go to the FX button and choose drop shadow, which you still can't see. And I'll drag this out and make it a little bit softer. There we go. So that gives it a little bit more of a contrast and I can even come in here and if I wanted to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Now that's too much of a blur. So I'll bring it down. Just know that if you do a Gaussian blur on here, it's going to permanently harm this image. So you can do it, but you can't ever undo it. So with this picture selected, I'm going to go up here to select or filter, convert for smart filters, click OK. And now when I go to filter, blur, well, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, I can add that Gaussian blur. I think it looks pretty good right there. And now with that selected, I can turn on and off that Gaussian blur filter. But anyway, those are the basic color selection tools of the magic wand tool and the quick selection. The quick selection is going to do the work for you the most of the time. So get used to that particular tool. In the next video, we're going to talk about doing a 
filter for color range. So how do we select different colors that are not adjacent to each other?